Orpheus, the greatest musician of all time, and his bride, Eurydice. His is the unluckiest of wedding days. Orpheus and Eurydice, number one, Ovid, 88. Orpheus, the widower bridegroom, mourned for the other world, but his grief was limitless. He dared to descend to the river Styx and cross it to the underworld. There, through the dark, shimmering gate, he found his king lying with Persephone at his melancholy heart. He knelt before them, drowning in his grief. I don't know what power love has down here, but I've heard he has some, for he brought you two together. If that is true that passion moved you once, then listen to me. I've tried to master this grief, and I cannot. I understand we all come here in the end. My bride, Eurydice, will soon enough be your citizen. In the ripeness of her years, I'm asking for a loan, not a gift. If you deny me, one thing is certain. I want you to keep me here as well. As Orpheus spoke, the pale phantoms began to weep. Tantalus was no longer thirsty, and Sisyphus sat on his rock to listen. she walked behind the graceful god, her steps constricted by the trailing grave clothes. Uncertain, gentle, and without impatience. She was deep within herself, like a woman heavy with child. She did not see the man in front or the path ascending steeply into life, deep within herself. Being dead filled her beyond fulfillment, like a fruit suffused with its own mystery and sweetness. She was filled with her own vast death, which was so new she could not understand that it had happened. She had come into a new virginity and was untouchable. 
her sex who closed like a flower at nightfall, and her hands had grown so unused to things that even the gods' infinitely gentle touch of guidance hurt her like an undesired kiss. She was no longer that woman with brown eyes who once echoed through the poet's songs. No longer that white couch of scent and eyelid, and that man's property no longer. She was already loosened like long hair, poured out like fallen rain, shared like a limitless supply. And when the god abruptly turned and stopped her and said with sorrow in his voice, He has turned around. She could not understand and softly answered, Who? Far away, dark before the shining exit gates, someone or other stood whose features were unrecognizable. He stood and saw how on the strip of road among the meadows, with a mournful look, the god of messages silently turned to follow the small figure, already walking back along the path, her steps constricted by the trailing rain. Uncertain, gentle, and without impatience. 